Welcome everybody to Fairway Media's production, round one, part three, SeaTac takeoff. Our TD was Chuck Mintz. I'm Justin Banks, here with Corey Jones. How you doing, man? Doing well, man. Thank you for having me once again. Looking forward to wrapping up part one here. Big shout to all the sponsors. Thank you for helping make this coverage possible. Absolutely killing it. And if you weren't familiar, we got Joel, Carter, Chandler, and Justin. We are in the middle of battle of takeoff. It's not SeaTac. It, uh, sorry, I got confused. Where are we at? We're taking off. We're Here not battling. we are. We're <laughs> we're taking off on hole 19, a par four, a 541 yes. feet. One of the more daunting tee shots here at SeaTac. Once again, big shout out to Jello Penguin for the whole previews. It looks fantastic. You are teeing from an elevated tee, and most players are really just looking to hit that first gap at 540 feet with a, kind of a snaking fairway. It's it's a lot to chew off on your first throw. Carter looking to take that mm-hmm. left to right approach and hopefully make it through this first tree line, which is really what most, like I said, most all players are. That's got to be just the biggest goal of this is just make it through that first tree line. Joel lining up a forehand here. Oh, looks like he's getting his fade too early. Yeah, he'll hit an early tree. He's going to be off to the right side of the fairway. That uh, it, There is room on both the left and right side once you make it down to that initial tree line. I'd say the left side might be a little friendlier, but I guess that also depends mm. on your approach style, if you want backhand, forehand, etc. There is yes. a lot to navigate regardless of how you choose to do it. This is definitely one of the more uh, challenging par fours. As far as off the tee pad. Now, for the event, yeah. it did actually play slightly under par. It averaged a 3.85, so there were some birdies to be found. Chandler once again showing off that forehand. It gets it right behind that bush, which is a pretty good visual marker for most players. If you can get just beyond that, you're, you're putting, and that is the goal. Unfortunately, Joel Looks gets like a little low. He angled that over. Yeah. So Justin has a, a very hard angle. I think forehand makes sense here. I think he picks that as well. Because you can mistake less. Uh, he gets high enough. Let's see. Oh, he's got a view. He's definitely in. He's pretty open with that shot. But as you said, yeah, where, where he was having to kind of angle his body out around that tree didn't give him too many options. Carter Mm -hmm. definitely hung that out wide. That would, uh, that would be a mistake, but one that he can still come back from. I mean, he's, he's well up there on the green. It's a wide open shot from up there. Yeah. That bush right there isn't too long, so it's just kind of long and leans a little bit. So, here comes some uh, outside circle one putts. Ooh. Off of the top. How many times have we seen that today? Jeez. These players have been all over the basket when they're not getting it in there, and Justin's making that good correction in the sense that his uh, his earlier misses tended to be low, so we haven't seen that in a while. Good to see him you know, changing up what needs to be changed and, and finding some success. He did find his way under par. Make sure, if you haven't, to check part one and part two to see how our players got to where they are right now. Unfortunate from Carter. Looks like just a couple of of forced errors, but he should be able to clean up from this, and there is plenty of golf left at SeaTac. Oh, no. Looks like he just let this one get in in his head, you know, and he has all the talent in the world, but he is still a young competitor, so... Yeah, the slight uh, head mistake. That'll happen, unfortunately. Yeah, I mean, it happens to the best and most seasoned players, so... We've all been there. Yeah. But knowing the way Carter plays, he'll have he'll have no problem coming back. That's going to light a fire. Joel <laughs> with a, you know, seemingly pretty hard trick putt to land there. Gets it in. Good for Joel. 
here we are hole 20 par 4 490 feet you see the drone currently getting to the next plateau which is slightly elevated from the tee and if you make it to that plateau you did something special that is really the goal this is a long yep. tunnel shot there is damage left and right as you can see you do not want to find yourself on either side of this fairway if you don't think you have the power to make it all the way to the front you just want to keep it in the center this one looks like it turned over a bit for Joel, but it's fighting and it made its way all the way up top. That, that is a smash. Wow. The aggressive drive. If you've never seen this hole with your own eyes, it may be hard to know how impressive that is, but that was an absolute smash from Joel. Looks like Justin, Justin. got punished on the conservative play. Yeah, it left it just a little bit... Uh, inside on the left there that is a phenomenal shot from chandler that is what most players should and probably do try to accomplish is just getting it to that base of the hill that's going to leave him a real straight approach here comes should make a, for an easy a big three. play go ahead and uh, spoil i'm going to spoil this this is awesome check this out <laughs> his power cool i've seen that? it in person so many times but that it does not cease to impress me like i wow. said if you haven't heard That's of carter before wow you are going to hear about him for many years to come that is the future of our sport in action He's he's been shooting yeah lots of thousand rated averages for tournaments against some of the biggest MPO fields out there and uh, like I said the Aaron's family just from top to bottom an amazing family uh, seeing mom and dad support the kids the way they do and seeing the kids get to compete the way they do it's it's phenomenal so big big shout out to the Aaron's yeah they're killing it out there some of the nicest folks you'll meet Joel unfortunately uh, didn't get the two. He got a little low on his putt. Uh, let's see if Carter can get the eagle. Oh my gosh, what a bid though. Both barely missing Gonna the eagle. Gonna be an easy tap in three there. That was fantastic. Oh, yeah, that's that's yep. accurate. Oh no. <laughs> that's a he, fantastic uh, edit, I love that. He approved that. Uh, that was a fun little uh, robbery. <laughs> dang that's disc golf man you know and it's it's something to say about Justin and his game that he turned around with a smile uh, seems like just you know he's like did you just he's see keeping that his head where it needs to be he's fought back from a lot of adversity and you know he says could you just look at it Would just look at it <laughs> but yeah you know it's good it's good, it's good to see him oh, putting a smile man. on his face and, and continuing on because there is a lot left to handle here at SeaTac, so keep that smile, Justin. Keep throwing well. Here we are, hole 21, another par four, just shy of 550 feet. Uh, this has another kind of elevated fairway. There's a, your, the tee pad is just slightly below the rest of the ground level, and it is a tunnel from start to finish. So really, you just, again, as I've said many times, you have to just stay center fairway. This is one of the more punishing holes if you are off the fairway to the left side of the fairway is a previous hole to the right side is a future hole and both of them have a lot in between you can see joel's starting to fade off to the left he's really got to hope that that doesn't get too far down there chandler lining up the forehand wow is he gonna make it through that Unreal. next gap? holy moly Unreal. That that shot right there is something to be proud of. Hell yeah, dude. Yeah, everybody was you impressed. You know, we're, <laughs> we're 21 holes in, but I cannot see enough of that forehand. Keep it up, Chandler. You are doing amazing things. Let's hope yeah, that finds its way back. That we didn't know. There how. we go. <laughs> yeah, that, I mean, again, this is one of those things where if you at home are watching this and you've never seen or walked these fairways before, it's hard to describe how incredible that shot was, and it was 
it was phenomenal. Not only was the distance there, the that control was, a was there drive for Justin. Yep. Justin also, yeah. So far, all these players seem seemingly are going to do okay. We don't know how far Joel made Ooh. it down. Carter gets a little caught up on that left side low ceiling, but this being a par four, he should have no problem at least salvaging a par with his skill set that he does have. Justin keeping one low down the center gets caught up a little bit oh. on the grass, seemingly he was a uh, circle more of a skip. two. Yeah, yeah, I, I think he was kind of playing for that ground play, but Joel's got didn't quite shot. make it to the He's dirt. Going so forehand. Joel with a forehand roller. Yeah, so he got stuck under a tree, going left or right. Don't quite know where that finished, but we'll get to see in a second. Here is Chandler with just a nice, easy little tap up. Look how far up that fairway he made it with what a phenomenal shot. Good up from Carter. So far, Joel has seen left side fairway, right side fairway. Yeah. And now under the pin. That's really one of the first times we've seen Joel do that during this round. He's been in just a really, really clean. That being said, he's still looking to be able to convert a par and not really take any damage there. But he is highlighting that even, you know, one of the best golfers in the world at a course like SeaTac, if if you're off left or you're off right, you're going to feel it. Mm -hmm. Great, Great birdie there, birdie Chandler. From Chandler. Goodness gracious. What a shot. I'm still I'm just still reliving that drive for Chandler. What a what a freaking smash, man. I I I want to do that someday. Carter right in the dead center. Good putt. Joel with the putting jacket back on. Hits the par. Keeping those double digits. Chandler's climbing up, though. You know, he's been steadily chipping away at that little bit of a lead that Joel has on uh, this card. Good to see. Keeping it in the fight. All right. Here we are. A hole 22. Par 4. 458 feet. You're going to see the drone start to turn right at this tree and then continue straight. So players are gonna have to navigate a little over 200 something feet before the hole takes about a 90 degree turn. You'll see rollers, you'll see forehands. There is a pretty tall Anheuser backhand you can throw as a right-handed player. Definitely expect Chandler to be able to do something here with the control he has on a forehand. If it doesn't stay too long, it's gonna be just left edge there. I'm not sure how much uh, they've had practice here, here, but they're, they're really showing uh, how, how, showing us how to do it here. Yeah, I mean, if if they didn't have much practice here, that just speaks volumes about the skill set that they have because this course Absolutely. has some pretty demanding landing zones. And here's Carter going for that big over-the-top Anheuser shot I was talking about earlier. If you have the arm for it, you can do some pretty amazing stuff, and he is wow. up there. Oh, my God. Yes, sir. What a shot, Carter. I forgot about that shot. That was phenomenal. He really knows how to flip that disc really high and it penetrates right. It's, that's so cool to watch. I mean, not only is Carter an amazing disc golfer, he that that kid is just an amazing athlete. Like he he is he is an athlete no matter what he's doing and he is showing it to you there. Cuz yeah, that that shot is that's a, I would call that a one, a one percenter kind of shot. There's not a lot of people that are going to execute that. So kudos to Carter. Chandler lining up here. He's got a little bit of a gap here. If he gets over the top he, of this, it he, should be he pretty gets good. High enough. Yep. That's fantastic. Really looking to make a statement. And I got to tell you, there's not a lot of players that can navigate SeaTac the way that Chandler does, being forehand dominant. He has some real control over that disc, and I'm, you know, I'm just excited to watch him throw every time. Similar line for Joel. Wow. And I think, uh, I think he's gonna be okay with that. You know, didn't quite get the skip in, but wow. Ringy dingy. Yeah, what a shot. <laughs> Ringy dingy. 
the sound <laughs> speaks for itself. But I'll like, describe it anyway. All think right. back to a few throws <laughs> ago and <laughs> think 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 about what everybody else had to do on their approach and then look what Carter had left <laughs> after that drive. Phenomenal yeah. shot. I was like, oh yeah, that was his uh, second shot. Holy crap. Uh, this is for three. Lucky you. Not lucky. Congratulations. That was fantastic. Good effort. Lucky out of jealousy. <laughs> yeah, right. That's the future of our sport, and we are the past. So <laughs> good for well, you, I'm here Carter. to Keep provide as much footage as possible to Awesome Golf. It is a pleasure. Exactly. The putting jacket continues for Joel. Um, yep. Birdies, 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 birdies. And a par. All right. Love to see it. Here we are, hole 23, another par four, 491 feet. This hole, like a few previous, has kind of a few directions. It, it's going to go hard to the left and then hard to the right. You can see the T sign there in the bottom corner of your screen. Chandler going. This is the with aggressive play. Tall order Hard here. As much as the fairway as possible. Oh wow. Yeah, he he's made it nearly to the, the fairway, second but corner. But on the right side, he'll have a hard angle. Yeah. I I have not yeah, played this route. Yeah, 491 feet. The distance. Yeah, this is a route that most players it, won't play. It takes a pretty large forehand or a very aggress aggressive turnover backhand. Most players are going to probably keep fairway. it up the center gap. But all yeah. three of these guys so far opting to go oh, no. left. That, unfortunately for Carter, is out there. Low. That's going to be low. that's going to be trouble. Yeah. Yeah. the The intended fairway, as you can see, is basically the walking path that follows straight. Here comes Justin. A little short, it looks like. Yeah. He's kind of in the middle of that. I believe this is uh, Carter's shot. Um, aiming at the sky, trying to get as much of this as possible. And yeah, that's you know that's going to be hard to do from where to from the where left, he was. Kind of near the bend. Yeah. Yeah, you know, there's there's no real way to make it around the corner without taking the aggressive route they did on one shot. Yeah. And that was but Justin's you can see here that third shot. If you can. By the way. Yeah, and you can see. This is the corner that essentially Chandler was aiming at on his drive. Now that yes. path does play OB traditionally. Wow. Yep, that's correct. Yeah, Joel just puts his disc right by it. Yeah, and you can see here the corner that Chandler's at is usually where you're trying to make it after your second shot. So where he got on his first shot is is big. It's hard to get there. Really, the only way to get there know. is to play the aggressive route that they did. Ooh. Looks like he slapped the hill there on that little pond, but he's going to be on the front side of it, which is definitely a putt. Most likely outside circle yeah. one, unless it had a bit of uh, rolling. And here's third shot. For Carter making Carter. good. He puts it under it. Joel with a lengthy here's putt here. Joel. I believe this is for Bird. No. Oh, unfortunate. Yeah, he wanted you can hear he's back. not happy with that. You know, it was online, but just a little low, you know, a little low. Hmm, another top hit. Justin just a little high there. But again, you know, most every one of these misses from any of our players has been hitting metal, so... Oh no, he had a chance there. He's yeah, going to take the par. He'll scrape the par. He had a great drive, just didn't capitalize on the, the short game, unfortunately. Well, and the hole 23 plays pretty close to par. It played a 3.93, so there were a few birdies to be had. And we're ignoring uh, evidence <laughs> that didn't happen, and it doesn't matter. And I don't know what this is, but it's... 
to be saved later. Now it's part of the course. Um, <laughs> yes. All right, here we are. Hole 24, par 3, 422 feet. Pretty similar to the last hole. You have kind of an S-shaped fairway unless you can really get up over the top. You're going to see players have to go left to right and then make it under the largest tree you can see off the tee pad there. It's a low ceiling about halfway through the flight unless you Her, can yeah. just really get up over the top of everything, which is uh, what Ooh, Joel seems to be a, trying to do. Yeah, here's taking a bite. Oh, it stalls out, unfortunately. It unfortunately, yeah, uh, it, it, it caught that left side. It, you have to get so up and over but, on that left side to make it happen. And so Joel it's possible. throws his hands down saying whatever. And, and then Carter says, oh, I know what to do. Let me just throw this it's cool like thing that does before. cool stuff. Yeah, that. And um, does cool things. <laughs> Uh, saying that's a phenomenal Kid. shot is an understatement. Yeah, that's how, yep. <laughs> that's how you react to that shot because that is that's just, again, know. this hole is 422 feet if you walked a straight line to the basket. So he just threw probably 450, 460 on a it, Sky Anheuser and absolutely pinned it. Phenomenal stuff from Carter there. Kind of weak, a little piecing. to the side, but should still be a putt. Yep, these guys are piecing it up there. Joel goes big high. Probably something stable to pan. Ooh, a little long. Dang. That looks to be, yeah, 45, maybe 50. Definitely left a little bit more than you would hope. This is one of the more difficult par threes, but he doesn't but care. Bangs it. There's that putt. There's that guy's putt. A gangster, gangster with a frisbee. Holy moly! Watch this replay. Center, heart of the chains. Great, great job, Joel. That's the Joel Freeman we know and love. Great putt from Joel. Oh, oh so no. close from Justin. Another Justin robbery. Straight in. Good shot, Kramer. And the two tap in for Carter. A tap in birdie for Carter on a hole that averaged nearly a half stroke over par. Really making Straight gains up. on that one. Killing Great it. shot, dude. Here we are, hole 25, par three, 314 feet. It's a fairly straight fairway, but you do have a few things to navigate from the tee. Uh, from mm -hmm. this angle, you can see that it that it is, you know, there is a straight line, but you kind of have to keep it low. There are a few things you have to get around. Most players, I think, are going to throw a forehand so they can use that left to right space once you make the initial gap. Carter went quite a bit more left than I imagine he was intending to. Yeah. There is one path long left uh, that did not go into play there, though. Uh, and that's not Chandler around a making lot. a good move. Yeah, that was a little dicey off the tee, but he was able to hit that initial gap and just let it carry straight. Just once again showing his skill set with that with the forearm, the forehand. Now if Joel can keep wow. off that tree, oh. uh, you know it was tracking there the whole way. Without that, that's a legitimate ace run. That was so yeah. close. Maybe a little lower. I don't know. Um, here comes Justin. Lining up the backhand. Oh, no. oh, no. He lets Early that release. out left. Yeah. There's a little field left there. Yeah, he made it through most of the initial tree gap. So, again... If you don't find yourself completely jailed off, you likely can make a par on this hole, even with an errant drive. I mean, it's only 315 feet, so again, once you make it past that first tree line, it's, it is pretty wide open. Mm -hmm. It's pretty smooth up and down. 
Carter. And a new airplane arrives for the next shot. <laughs> Joel for two. He's got one bush in the way. Which could be an issue. He does swing his putter pretty low. Not today, Ooh. though. Ooh. Great putt from Joel. Right up over this. the top of that. Boom, boom. What a clinic. Good shots. Yeah, Joel has been playing really well. You know, a few mistakes, uh, maybe not even mistakes, just kind of slight missed putts, but anything double digits coming through here is a phenomenal score. Chandler just yeah. a little bit off the side there. He had a chance to continue to chip away at that lead that Joel has. Justin cleans up his putt. Carter here with probably a little bit more than he hoped for, but not too much at all. Nice par putt from Carter. Only a couple holes left for this round. And the, the last two holes are pretty attackable, so hopefully they can lock in a couple more birdies and pad that score a little bit more uh hole 26 here a par 3 255 feet it is downhill nearly the entire way and right behind the basket is a pretty severe drop off that leads to a path that would traditionally play as ob parked park city All right, so Carter goes right a little bit. Carter had a good drive there. That's going to leave him a attackable putt for sure. Here we have Chandler with the forehand route. Definitely got more of a skip than he hoped for. That's going to it's going to leave him a little bit more than anybody would hope for on this 255 foot hole. That definitely got a little bit away from the pin. We have Justin ripping a backhand right at it. Ooh, that rock just rock. saved him a Gorgeous. stroke and gained him a chance at birdie. The speed that was coming in at, if it did not hit that rock, it's likely going OB. Still gets it. Wow. Let's go. What a putt. Just probably 50 really feet looking out to finish there, strong. That was sick. Yeah, that was a great putt. Great putt. Another oh, great wow. putt. Wow, what a pleasure. Yeah, these guys are wow. putting up some serious scores. And Justin is showing amazing heart, amazing character, and being a top notch competitor. Just, you know, keeping a smile on his face and. I can tell you from personal experience that nobody makes it out of SeaTac unscathed every time. So <laughs> good birdie there, yeah. turning it around, getting back to even for Justin. They, they, they know they're having a good round. Here comes the last hole. Tell us about it. Here we have really one of the few true ace runs on the course. Uh, hole 27, par three, 230 feet, really straightforward. The only real danger is throwing long and going out of bounds. But this is, again, one of the must-gets on the course for the day. It did play as the easiest hole at an average of 2.43. Yeah. If you're having a great round and you come up to this hole, you're like, all right, I need some sprinkles on top. Let's go. That was almost Dang. a sprinkle right there. Mm -hmm. This might be the first backhand we've seen. Holy from moly. You're absolutely right. He has no problem getting it out there with the rest of them. Here we have Justin. No problem at all. Look. Oh. Almost. They'll be right All four there, players are just uh, to the to the left side of the pin there. Chandler the furthest out at potentially circle's edge, but probably right about 30 feet. 
There we go. Excellent Great work from Chandler. Shot. Finds himself in double digits, 10 under for the round. Good work from Chandler. It was a real pleasure to get to see him throw. All right. The straddle for no reason works. Good I like from, Carter's style. You know? It works. Can't Keep fault the man. Coming in the clubhouse. Nine under. That is a very respectable score out at SeaTac. Oh, no, yeah. Justin. And, oh, no. He just bounced out. So, so Joel makes this, obviously. Uh, he makes a good 15 down uh, butt whooping on the round. Uh, Kenny Clark uh, comes in at 13. Luke Sampson, cast a plast guy, 12 down, and Andrew Marweed will be the next features on the round. Kramer uh, ties him, but his PDGA is just a little bit lower. Carter right behind him at 9. Eli Swenson and Kyle Crabtree at, at 7. So thanks a lot for watching our coverage. Take a look at a few of these highlights. Thanks again to our sponsors. Hit that like and subscribe. Holy moly, Carter, you can drive ridiculously. Unreal. What a shot. Thanks again for watching, everybody. Thank you again, Corey, for joining me on this excellent display of SeaTac Disc Golf. Happy to be here. We'll see you for round two. Thank you again, Chuck Mintz, for putting on amazing events and giving the Northwest a place to play. Thank you, Fairway Media, for the coverage, and we hope to see you on the next one.